Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. You know, one of the ministries in our church, which may not be as well known as other ministries, is the uh, ministry to separated and divorced Catholics. This may be because of some of the misconceptions and misunderstandings surrounding Catholics who are separated and divorced. My guests today are all active in one way or another in this marvelous, beautiful ministry that we have. They're going to share their own stories. They'll share the ministries that are available, and they'll share the needs that are available for healing, hope, and consolation when a marriage has ended. You know, that's so important. You know, there's a great love of God in all of our hearts, and that, that healing and hope and blessedness of sons and daughters and friends is a, is a great, great ministry that we have in our church. So with me today is a dear, dear friend, Deanna Sass. And Deanna and I, I guess, have known each other since uh, the kids were kids. And, uh, exactly. But Deanna's a marvelous, marvelous person and, and a beautiful person for our diocese. Deanna is the director of pastoral care for our diocese. She's also a licensed counselor who also counsels those who are going through divorce and separation. Deanna, always a blessing to have you with us. Thank you so much, Monsignor. It's a pleasure Deanna. to be here. Pleasure to be here. With us also is Mary Jackie. Mary is a divorced Catholic. She has a master's degree in social work and is a licensed social worker. She will also share with us some of the statistics related to separated and divorced Catholics and the impact of divorce on children. She's a marvelous parishioner at St. Dominic's in Brick. Yes. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, Monsignor. Maria Rodriguez, also a divorced Catholic, is very active in the ministry on a national level. Maria is the Region 3 representative for the National Catholic Divorce Ministry. The region includes New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Maria will share with us the future goals and the vision on a national level, the National Catholic Divorce Ministry, as well as her experience as a ministry leader at her parish, St. Veronica's in Howell. Thank you, Monsignor. We have Rich and Elise Hobson, both previously divorced and now married to each other, and they're leaders of the separated and divorced ministry in their marvelous parish, St. James in Pennington. They both had their first marriages annulled, and they met at the program Beginning Experiences for Separated and Divorced Catholics. Rich and Elise will share with us their own story and the great things that are happening at St. James in Pennington in the separated and divorced ministry. Rich is also a marvelous permanent deacon. <laughs> Welcome, Rich and Elise. Thank, Thank you, Monsignor. Monsignor. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you five can run the whole diocese. <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. Deanna, maybe we're going to begin with yourself because sure. you're, sitting, you're sitting closest. <laughs> How about giving us an overview of the Ministry uh, for Separate and Divorced Catholics sure. in our own diocese? Oh, I'd be happy to. I think for those who aren't aware or haven't experienced it, perhaps personally or in their own families, uh, there are a lot of misunderstandings. And, and certainly there is an under understatement of the amount of pain and suffering that goes along with that experience in someone's life. Um, and so it's just absolutely essential that our church be present and be pastorally present you know, in those moments uh, of devastation, of broken dreams and broken hearts. Um, so I, you know, I feel so strongly about, about that ministry. Um, it's also certainly a place where evangelization uh, can take place. There are misunderstandings about being separated or divorced and um, some folks have that misconception that you know they're no longer welcome to be part of the Catholic community, and that's absolutely not true. So it's so important for us in the ministry to get the word out and to clarify some of these misconceptions and to welcome with open arms those who have uh, suffered that truly, truly painful experience uh, and to know they are welcome and, and a part of our family, an important, essential part of our family. Beside the misconceptions, uh, what are some of the needs that we might have in our diocese and certainly the goals for your ministry? Absolutely. Um, well, one of the needs is uh, we'd really like to see a growth in the ministry. Out of our 100 plus uh, parishes right now, we have under 20 parishes with a ministry for separated and divorced. It's somewhere in the teens. And um, we would love to see the opportunity you know, for, for more parishes to develop the ministry. 
We would love also for the places that already do have the ministry, we'd like to see more folks coming and taking advantage of uh, the beautiful healing presence that is available through the support groups, to be with other people, share the experience, who, you know, who understand what, has, what it has been like. Uh, so we hope to do several things from the diocesan point of view. Uh, we would like, we have really three priorities. One is to raise awareness about this important ministry. The other is to grow the groups that we have and to plant new groups so that more and more of our parishes can have uh, this ministry. And then the third thing is we'd really like to uh, welcome new leadership. So as folks go through, and this is the reason some of the groups kind of die, uh, the leaders move to another place or get older and, and choose not to continue being a leader, and then the group itself fades away. We'd like to have a real focused attention on ministry uh, formation of leaders for this ministry. So those are our diocesan priorities right now in relation to this very, very vital ministry. And, and more vital as the years go by. Absolutely, yes. Mary, maybe you could just kind of tell us a little bit about uh, some of the statistics that you, you, you know of and studied. Yeah. And well, that's what it is. From my master's program, I did some research on it. The United States has the largest number of divorces in the world. And in the world? In the world. Kind of embarrassing. Uh, well, I, I was just thinking uh, when you said that. Yeah. Because that's, that's not something we're going to... Rah, rah, right. Yeah. The number two place is the UK, but the United States is 30% higher than them. Japan is a number six place. We're 50% higher than, than theirs. Um, I found it interesting that the Centers for Disease Control keeps track of the statistics. So we've heard that divorce rates have... Uh, uh, fallen, but that's not actually true. And if you look at their statistics, they show that both the number of marriages and the number of divorces have fallen at the same rate. So it's about 9% less in the last uh, 10 to 12 years. Um, is that because there are just less people uh, at that age, or is it less that just people are getting married? Uh, I'll or come both. to that in oh, a moment. Okay. Um, uh, other interesting statistics I found is 27% of white adults, 22% uh, of black adults, 20% of Hispanics, and 8% of Asians all have been or are divorced in the United States. And so, I, you know, I've mentioned to Deanna that if that was a virus, I think the CDC would have reacted to it. So to me, those numbers are pretty high for no reaction at all. Um, people say, well, there, there's no mortality rate involved in it. And I, and I would disagree with that because we know that stress is the number one cause of a lot of diseases which end up you know, taking lives. And another um, statistic is suicide. Um, and in the group that I facilitate, I've had three women die of cancer and one man commit suicide. Um, they say that men commit suicide at a rate four times as high as women and no, one of the number one causes is divorce. So that's, you know, that's frightening. Another um, syndrome that they're recognizing within the last 15 years is called broken heart syndrome. There's a technical term to it, but I don't know what that is. Um, and they're looking at that too. That can kill people, but it certainly makes people ill as well. Yeah. So um, when you asked about Catholics divorce, so there's 78.2 million Catholics in the United States as of 2014, Georgetown University, I, I got the site from there. Mm -hmm. And of them, 7.86 million Catholics are divorced. So that's a, a sizable number. Is, is there a percentage of that? that One-tenth of all um, Catholic adults, they're saying, are divorced. Um, Catholic marriages worldwide have declined between 2000 and 2014, significantly. Um, in 2000, there were 3.73 million marriages, and in 2014, there was 2.79. So that's a, a significant decline. Um, in the United States alone, in 2000, there was 261,626 um, Catholic marriages, and in 2014, that's down to 154,000. So you see, worldwide and nationwide, it, it's, you know, marriages are, and, and we know that's from the high degree of cohabitation. 
you know, and then we can't track those statistics. So people live together without the sacrament of matrimony, and then when they break up, there's no way to track those statistics. Do you have any idea of how many people that would live together and then get married? And, and of those, how many would end up in divorce? I actually did do a paper on that. Um, I don't remember the numbers, <laughs> but what they're finding with cohabitation is the rate of divorce after they get married is higher for them. And they believe that the reason for it is there isn't the commitment moving in together that there is when you get married. So two people get move in together and say, well, let's see how this goes. So however many years it lasts, and then they might decide to move on to getting married. But um, the incident of divorce is higher for them. So. so I guess some people could just think that, well, we live together, we'll try it out. But it's not, it's not the same. It's not the same, no. And it, especially if you're younger, there's a lot of reasons why it's not the same. Right. Exactly. You're all involved in your parish groups. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Which I think is a marvelous thing. And you said that there's less than uh, less 20, than 20 yeah. uh, parishes in the diocese that, that would have. So do you, do you spread it out a little bit? I mean, do, do, do some neighboring parishes kind of say, well, I don't have one, but Deacon Rich does, so uh, we'll, we'll call it Deacon Rich. We are trying. We okay. reach out with advertisement to all the parishes in the Mercer County area when we're doing different events. We'll put it in the local papers. We'll put it in the monitor, anything. I mean, I don't care if you come from Monmouth County. Yeah. You yeah. know, come out. You know, we want to have you there to help you heal. In our office, when we get calls from people looking for groups, sometimes they don't want to be right in their home parish. There's a certain sense they'd like the anonymity, so they kind of enjoy yeah. going to a different parish for that. People do that going to confession. That's true. <laughs> 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 well, it's kind of hard when you go to confession and somebody says, that's okay, Walt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, wait, listen, we're all human people, right? It, that's it's, right. It's a marvelous, marvelous thing. Lisa Rich, maybe we can, uh, you're a leader in, in uh, St. James and Pennington. Uh, tell me, did you start up this group or was, it, well, was there always a group? And, and what kind of activities, in a sense, do you take? Uh, we started it about uh, 12 years ago okay. with a couple other leaders because uh, at the time we found nothing in the area. A lot of pain but no recovery programs. So we uh, decided to do some training and start the group up. And, and it's been you, running ever since. Well, you, your uh, parish priest had gave you support and he sent them uh, to Notre Dame for training. Um, the university? This, yes. In, yes. There was uh, through uh, Catholic well, divorce. Catholic divorce ministry right. had training at the had time. Had training, so <laughs> send a couple of us. I was later in the stage because I didn't come into play in St. James until we got married. But uh, Rich and um, Kathy, who also uh, run ran the meetings, they went out to Notre Dame for the trainings, and then they came back and started the group. But they had the support of their parish priest, mm -hmm. and that made Which all the important. difference in the that world. Was very important. Very important. And wasn't Maria one of your trainees? Yeah, she came yes. to our group. Yes, yeah. I. Maria, <laughs> can you tell us about that? What was it like training with them? It was wonderful. What happened, I was divorced, and I was looking for something for divorce people, and I was not aware that there were divorce groups throughout the diocese. And during the, uh, the diocese had the vibrant parish paper that would, they would email to you, and I was part of the email list. And I came across the Stations of the Cross, and it was at their parish. So I reached out to them, and they invited me to attend their sessions prior to the Stations, which I did. And I was touched. The first night I went there, I was very touched. And I knew this was something that we needed at my parish. And I approached uh, our priest, Father Brenda Williams at the time, and he openly accepted me to open up the group, and I started the group in November of 2011. Now you, and your parishes, you, when you have a group that meets, I mean, does the group stay together? Does the group kind of expand? Does the group, uh, and what do you do in the group? I mean, you, you we currently are running two different kinds of sessions. Okay. One, an open session, so people can come and go when they need it. Mm -hmm. Pain doesn't go on a schedule. Mm -hmm. And then we're also running a program that is a closed session where you have to sign up, and it's 12 weeks long. I think it's 12. Yeah, it's 12, 12 weeks. weeks long. And that creates a bond between those 12 people. So both kinds of groups have their purpose. The have you ever had a situation where uh, 
a couple is divorced, and they both call you up, and they both want to come yes. to your meeting? <laughs> and then do you, do you separate it? How, how, how does that uh, work We've out? had one or the other. Oh, mm, okay. so we, that, They didn't both show up at the same meeting, but we've, we've had to deal with that, yeah. Mm. So we've heard both sides of the stories at, at different times. <laughs> well, you know what, but I'm, I'm smiling a little bit because as a priest, I've done weddings of people that have been divorced and then remarry each other. And I didn't know if they would, you know, go to, go to one of your meetings all of a sudden start to say, gee, you know, we, we really do love each other or we can, we can work it out or something, you know? But we try to keep all the meetings confidential sure. and, you know, uh, to support them. And that's what we're there for. We're not, Rich and I are not counselors. Our other facilitators are not counselors. We're just there as a support system for them to give them well, that a, healing power. Well, is there power. a process to it, though? I mean, I mean, you say you have 12 meetings. And so the first meeting, do you do... Whatever, and the second, I mean, is there, what's, how what's does the, the process flow? work? Well, the Rich flow. started one group that was under... Um, it's called Divorce Care. Divorce Care. It's a Christian-based program, but uh, it wasn't Catholic. Then we've had another program. So now I'm doing the Catholic Divorce Survival Guide, which is, um, ta which is a spin-off of divorce the care. Divorce Care, but from a Catholic perspective. And so that's the 12-week session that we're doing currently right now, and we're doing that for the first time. What are some of the themes that you Everything from lo lo loneliness to financial uh, to being angry. Dealing with kids, dating again, um, finding yourself, you know, <laughs> just as a human being, and where do you Is fit? there sort of a recommendation of, uh, like, how long you would be divorced before you'd come into a process like this? Does that matter? No, we have them separated. separated. It doesn't matter if you're just separated. I mean, we've had people that have been separated for just a short period of time, and they come and actually they reconcile with their, their spouses. Then there's other people that come, and they've been divorced for five years, and they've never even done anything for themselves. You know, maybe they've done private counseling, but they've never done something with a group that helps with the healing process. So. Maria, how, do you have the same type of, of, of process in your parish? Yes, we use this. I, I have used the divorce care program. I also use, there's another Catholic program. It's a journey of hope. Mm -hmm. And it's in the same, we touch the same topic. It's loneliness, anger, forgiveness, mm -hmm. uh, reconciliation. You know, all the topics that hurt the person that has a loss. And there's a great deal of healing that goes through that. And, uh, you know, our focus in m the ministry that I run at St. Veronica's is to bring Catholics back to the Catholic Church, bring them back to the sacraments, L let them know that they can receive communion as long as they are not in another marriage or living with someone, that we are here to help them, not to condemn them. And uh, there's been a great healing and a great success in my group. So that's some of the misconceptions that Deanna spoke mm -hmm. about is some people think yes. that once you're divorced, you can't, you can't go to church or you can't receive communion. Yes, right. we're not accepted at the church. They don't accept us anymore. And I tell them it's not true. It's amazing. We still find that uh, as uh, I do a little hospital ministry and every once in a while, you know, you talk to somebody in the hospital and they say, well, no, I can't go to communion, Father. And you say, well, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can if, if, if it's the right mm -hmm. situations. Uh, tell me a little bit about this national ministry, uh, Maria. That, that's, is it different from, uh, you know, you just have meetings on a, on a regional basis? Of, well, of we have um, na national meetings and regional meetings. Uh, as a, we, ha we have 14 regions within Catholic Divorce Ministry, and each region represents certain areas. I represent Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And we are here to help out dioceses and parishes that don't have this ministry. And we are there to go there and help them to start a support group. And we have uh, national conferences, as the Rich and Elise New went to the Notre Dame years ago. They had a lot of training there. I, I just came aboard two years ago into CDM, with CDM. And uh, we are here to help anyone that needs help and make anyone aware of what we are here for. So do you coordinate this with Deanna De as, as, you know, the, the head of the ministry in a mm -hmm. sense at the level, and you bring back ideas from the national level, yeah. and you folks come with other people that are doing things on the parish? Mm -hmm. Well, all of these ideas. people are part of my advisory council, <laughs> and there are about 10 other people, and uh, 
could not do the ministry without them. They bring uh, networking is a beautiful yeah, thing. They bring that energy ideas. and ideas and the parish experience, um, and it's priceless. As a matter of fact, Maria and I, uh, as as the regional coordinator, she has to do a, a large event every year. And as a director, you know, I like to do large diocesan events to highlight each ministry that's a part of pastoral care. And so we are collaborating and um, are hoping to bring in a very, very well-known uh, national speaker. It's not confirmed, so we can't say yet, but uh, we're looking for something in the fall, probably October, uh, a two-day event that would include one day to train up new leaders, as we talked about, this person would do that. And then on the second day, it would be an open day for all separated and divorced Catholics for a day of healing. And um, we're really excited about that and, and look forward to that. And that can make a real, give a real jump start to the ministry in our diocese. You know, every time you mention the word healing, I just get excited because yeah. that's the, uh, I don't, don't want to say that's the, the that's only it. thing Jesus kind of brought us, but it's certainly a very, very Absolutely. basic uh, human event. I mean, uh, even when we talk about uh, just on my mind today, because the they, what the reading was about the you know the name of the the leper. I yes. mean, you know, it doesn't yes. matter how we get healed, but we we, we got to yes. every everybody needs some healing Absolutely. of some. Uh, would, would anybody be willing to share? Uh, you know, the uh, how how participating in national uh, local levels uh, has helped to heal and give hope to uh, either your lives or other lives that be story, yes? I, I'd like to touch on something Elise said uh, when she talked about addressing the issues with children because we haven't talked about that. And um, when we look at the consequences of divorce, we see that it falls into four main categories and the impact on children is first. The other ones are interrelated though. The second one is uh, the diminished role of fathers in, um, their, in their children's lives. Um, the impact of reduced um, po you know, poverty for the mothers and children. And we know that single women and children are the largest segment of the poor in our country and emotional problems. Um, the statistics for that are one third of children of divorced um, parents five to 10 years down the road are doing fine. One third are compromised and one third they are, are really lost. They're the ones you find in the gangs and they attribute a lot of that to divorce and the diminished parental. They look for a family. They do. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's one of the topics that we cover is, you know, how to handle children in divorce and how not to make your problems the children's problems. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so important. I can't tell you how, how every once in a while I get a little upset when people will say, uh, uh, you know, it, it, the children will be fine. Well, you know what? Yeah. The children. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what, what they mean by fine, but what we, we all need, and, and children certainly need, you know, love and protection, and they've got to know. Uh, so I'm so glad that you're, yeah, you're we, involved in all of that. We would love to hear a story of healing, though. If, if any <laughs> of you have one in your pocket, that would be beautiful, as you asked before. I'll jump in. <laughs> uh, the, the church absolutely saved me. I was in a 25-year marriage that had ended. I had two teenage boys that were living with me, and the, the church, the people in the church, my pastor just rallied around me and encouraged me to continue being active in the parish instead of going to hide. And I, I swear that saved me. And then from that, I started finding uh, the different groups to help me. I went away on beginning experience, uh, and I was just busy raising two boys. Uh, you know, when a spouse dies, there's a ritual around that. But when there's a divorce, there's no ritual and people seem to scatter, whether they're afraid of it or whatever it is. Uh, so all those people rallying around me were, were just saving. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I got wrapped up in all the ministries and then met my wife. I was busy raising kids, working, uh, and from the, all that healing, and all, I just jumped into recovery. And then we met each other. And Beginning Experience was uh, another ministry, unfortunately in New Jersey, we are defunct at this point, but it is another healing ministry um, where, you know, it's separated, divorced, and widowed come together because it's a loss of a marriage. Um, and then you heal from that. And being on the team as a person, and in, you're helping others, but then again, you're working on yourself as well. And taking that time to work on yourself. I, I know it's hard to get out to these support groups. Uh, you know, it's on a Monday night, it's on a Tuesday night, and your kids are involved. But it really is good to take time for yourself to be 
Because if you're taking time for yourself, you're going to become a better parent for your children. You're going to become a better person overall if you're taking time for you and working on your healing. Here's that word again. Um, and that's what happened with Rich and I. We were working on our own healing, and be, through that, God brought us together, and we were able to grow from there. And then for Rich to go and become a deacon, you know, it's, you know, through the annulment process, it, which is also another healing process, it's very difficult, but a very healing process. And that has just helped us go along the way. You know, it, it, it's... Everybody needs that esteem to know that they're a beautiful, beautiful son and daughter of God. And when you mentioned, Rich, that if, if, if a spouse dies, there's a lot of pain in that. But somehow I think you can say, well, God, God, God's kind of doing that. I think when we have other difficulties in life, sometimes we look back and say, could I have done it? Did I, you know, it's those kind of things hang around. And, yeah. and I, that, that's a great, great ministry to help either bring it out or heal it or, or place it where it should be placed. Um, just along the way, what's one of the most important things that, that, that you, you took out of the ministry and, and what do you think helped you the most so that other people listening to us can maybe say, oh boy, that might help me. I, I, well, I heard a spiritual journey there with Rich and Elise. I mean, that was a definite a spiritual journey. It wasn't just a you know, sociological or... or uh, civil you know that process was deeply it brought you deeper into your faith absolutely, absolutely. yeah yeah beautiful and a lot of uh, journaling going along with that you know we were taught to journal and get you know mm -hmm. we also went to private counseling nothing wrong with that too you know we, we worked on ourselves so you recommend that sometimes or oh at least absolutely you, you offer it oh, or at least right. let people like uh, professional people uh, that, that can can help in those in those areas yep are there any other misconceptions? That's something I'd like people to, to, who are listening to us and seeing us to realize. Uh, we mentioned a misconception about uh, church. Mm -hmm. Other misconceptions that you want to raise in uh, 30 seconds or so that we have left. You can receive communion. You can't say it <laughs> enough <Amen>. times. <laughs> You're just yes, being divorced. There's no blame. There's no judgment. You know, it's something that happens. We on uh, CDM, we're trying to bring that also to the parishes. And, you know, I just want to mention one thing about CDM, that all the volu it's a volunteer position. We don't get paid to do this job. And anyone can find out by going on the website. So for more information on the Ministry of Divorced and Separated Catholics, uh, you can email Deanna uh, or, I guess, get in touch with any of you. That's uh, dsas at dioceseoftrenton.org. Please know you're loved, and there's a great God who loves you very, very much. And it's all part of our life and our journeys. Bless you. Bless you. Thank 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 you.